Happy birthday, boys and girls. My name is Jeffrey Scott Mitchell coming to you live on Memorex from an undisclosed location, default route. Happy Monday. I was thinking it's been a while or at least a few weeks or maybe even a couple months since I really felt like, thank God it's Monday. It's been a a good enough time to where I recognize that I'm waking up this morning, Monday, after two days off, feeling pretty good, feeling up, feeling like I'm not recovering from recovering. Because there was a time, and there probably still is, to where I went so far down that rabbit hole on those two days off, then it took some time to recover from that. Gaining like nine, 10 pounds over two days. This week, this morning, I woke up at 217.0. That should make me happy. If I was a normal person and expected normal things in life, or was used to having normal experiences, whatever that means, I would probably be happy with 217. I would probably be happy with my caloric, caloric intake over the last two days, especially seeing how I stayed at my mother's house. And that's just a incentive to eat built in. But I did get my rest. I did have some really good downtime and that felt good. That's probably one reason why I feel good. And as I'm noticing, I need more rest. As I'm noticing, I believe I need more rest than I allot myself. The eight, nine hours, but say I go to bed early, quote unquote early, to give myself more than eight hours sleep. I don't really sleep eight hours. I'll like, it's like six and a half. I'll wake up, then got to roll over and go back to sleep. But I still even think that like laying in the bed, quote unquote, resting or doing whatever I do in down mode, you know, turned off, basically like scrolling or doing something fairly mindless horizontal I think that contributes to my rest and I benefit from that energy wise once the day gets started so I've been getting more rest quote unquote rest and sleep I haven't been eating as much as I usually do on the weekends haven't been as indulgent haven't been as lazy not even sure I took a nap yesterday. I don't even think I took a nap yesterday. Of course, I didn't get up and get moving until about 11 or so. And I ate. Oh, I went and got... What's happening now is that the phone is starting to overheat. It's so hot out here. The phone is starting to overheat, especially with the case that I use. I spent $40 on this case. I never spent that much money on the case before for my phone. And it's worth it. I love it. It protects it, keeps my phone nice. The phone hasn't stayed this nice this long, ever. Of course, I paid $1,000 for this phone, the most expensive phone I've ever bought. I made the investment, so I went in and bought the case, but it overheats in the case. It overheats when I connect it to Andro Android Auto and have the power on. It overheats if I'm recording and I got it on the dash and it's in the sun or if it's laying on the seat in the sun, it overheats. So I have to uh, take the case off. I'll take the case off and hold it up by the air conditioner. <laughs> That's what makes me think I might want to get or need a uh, phone mount for the car, which I do need a new one that uses the uh, air vents. I can see how that be, would be advantageous. Anyway, I think I was talking about Monday and having energy and feeling good. You can probably see a little extra 
spark in my voice, pep in my step for a Monday. Because I haven't been going down that rabbit hole as far as I used to and indulging. And I say literally gaining nine, 10 pounds over two days. Like, go, like waking up maybe, maybe Friday, waking up Saturday morning at like 212 and then going to bed Sunday night at like 224, 223. And then to recover from that on Monday morning, you feel it, your body feels it. And, and I may can even say, especially at my age, but also at my age, things take time. You know, that instant gratification that I'm used to, I gotta back off of that. Things take time. I think one of the reasons I cut this on was because it seemed like it took months for me to get to where I'm at now. It seemed like it took months for me to get my metabolism or whatever, my mojo, my energy going to a place that where I'm waking up feeling not positive, but have forward moving energy, forward progressing energy, I guess. As I settle in to what I was gonna call normalcy, normal life. But as I was thinking about that this morning, I'm like, who's to say that, you know, traveling every other weekend, you know, seeing that band live, seeing this band live, doing this, doing that, isn't normal life. So normalcy is probably not the word. Mundane, routine, but then again, mundane is probably the word I'm looking for because routine, it can be part of your routine if it's normal. If, if traveling, you know, going here, going there every weekend, every other weekend or whatever, and planning trips, it could be normal. And that could be part of your routine. So I guess get used to mundane life. Settle into that Monday, mundane, quote unquote Monday for everybody, everything relative. Some people might enjoy that. Life where, or period, where you're just working, going to work, working Monday through Friday, punching the clock, no days off, no, you know, uh, leisure days, no random, spontaneous leisure days, and the such. Just head down, Monday through Friday, nine to five or whatever. In my case, 12 to eight. And just get used to it and just bang it out. And build that PTO and the such. I guess I could call that mundane. Because for a while there, my normal life was flying all around the country. Working here, working there. Going to see this, doing that. That was my normalcy. So who's to say? You know? But either way, I reckon that as I get older and experience of life through age, 62 years, seven years, 11 months to retirement, full retirement, according to the Social Security Administration, as the law stands now, where I was set to get $3,641 a month the last time I checked. That number will definitely go up, and it should because of inflation and rising prices, and my rising income will push that number up higher over the years. Just, you know, it's good to have something to work towards to. It's good to have something, an incentive, something to work towards to. 
And hopefully while I'm doing that, I'm enjoying life and accomplishing things, but still have an underlying deep goal, a goal of the big goal, you know, a, something of achievement, a crowning achievement that you could call it. If I can work till 70, and I can, at this job, if I maintain my mental and physical capabilities, and because the job is not that strenuous, you know, it's not too much physical activity, and even if it was, I probably can handle the bulk of it, maybe not like a 20 year older or a 30 year older, but I'm sure I could hold my own being the old man that I am. So it's nice to have things kind of planned out and have something to look forward to, even if it's, it doesn't even have to be anything super special or super this or super that. Just to have something to look forward to, you know? Everything is relative. Everything is relative. And subjective. And that's what makes life wonderful. That's what makes life the best. The fact that everything is relative and subjective. And there is no one clear cut reality and there is no one clear-cut universal truth or understanding or way we should do it. History has shown us that there are many paths to outcomes. And history has a way of whimsically choosing this moment to, as choosing this moment to be the catalyst for something great. Something, you know, off the wall, out of the ordinary. That's just the way life is. And I quite frankly enjoy it that way. Opportunity. Some might call it chaos. Opportunity and chaos. Littlefinger said that. Game of Thrones. Chaos is a ladder. I remember that because I liked it. And it is. And probably in, in a large part because I have a lot of confidence in my capability and understanding of the way I believe things work. I believe that my understanding and the way things work and my capability, no, not even my capability, it's my understanding of the way things work helps me to be successful. To the point that where I know people who I look at their, my experience with them from how they think and what they think and their observations and their deductions from observations I said to myself, I say to myself, that's not the way life works. That's not the way life works for me. That's not the way I see things. That's not the way I interpret things. You know, trying to be as humble as possible. You know, cause you really, I can't say that they're wrong. Cause they're not, it's their perspective, it's their reality. And we need all kinds of realities. We need every reality. But I'm looking at him, and I said, your life is gonna be tough. And I can see why your life is tough and why you have this issue and that issue every three to four minutes in your life. Or you don't get along with that or this doesn't happen for you or, you know, you, I'm like, that's not the way life works. You can't expect, in my, in my experience, I've, it seems to me 
that you can't expect this or that from people. You can't ex expect people to do that or expect people to do this, whatever it may be, at any given occasion. And you really can't, and therefore that means you can't depend on them. You really can't trust anybody or depend on anybody. You really can't. And when you do, you have to understand that that's what you're doing. You have to understand that, hey, I'm relying on somebody else. I'm depending on somebody else. It may or may not happen the way I want them to. I'm expecting them to do this. I'm expecting them to do that. And when you put yourself in that position, whoo, you have to understand that you're leaving yourself open for many, 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 many possible outcomes that you didn't foresee or that you didn't expect, which you, will, which you should be open to anyway, <laughs> regardless. But when you heavily or really put a lot of emphasis on other people to be a part of the equation, you factor in other human factors. Makes it tough. So, I went down that street probably because I was talking about how my understanding of life makes chaos exciting chaos and change exciting because especially I don't know it might be anywhere but especially in the United States I figured out probably when I was in going to DeVry my second time to get my bachelor's degree in 1995-96 it hit me that you can have anything you want in this country you can have anything you want as long as you know how to fill out the paperwork. And that may, that may even include finding the paperwork, finding who has the paperwork, what jurisdiction. You can have any goddamn thing you want as long as you know how to properly fill out the paperwork and find it. Because when I went back to school, 95, 96 to get my bachelor's degree, after having worked 10 to 12 years, you know, manufacturing industry, seeing what quote unquote working life was, employment, you know, HR, politics, you know, going through about 10 years as an adult. See, it was 95. I was born in 62. Probably started working when I was 23. 23, that'd be 86. So, it was about 10 years. So I only worked about 10 years. Then I went back and got a bachelor's degree. So it really wasn't that long, I guess. And having had the experience of quote unquote real life, real working life, you know, paying bills, rent, dealing with uh, law enforcement, you know, through DUIs or whatever, just the whole system, system. To go back to school and having to take basic courses to get my bachelor's degree like economics and logic and critical thinking the social sciences I was like these damn people teaching me everything I know to be to take over the world everything teach me about government teaching me how to do this how that runs how this works I'm like they're teaching people everything they need to know if they want to take over the world, <laughs> at least in the United States. How government works, how legislation works, how to fill out paperwork, how to notify this, how to do resumes, how to write letters, everything. How to talk to people, speech. And I'm thinking, how can anybody be against this? How can anybody have a problem <laughs> with this? Now, when I was growing up and I played midget football for the Buckeye Elks, 
I used to go to practice thinking practice was for calisthenics or physical shape. I always, for me, I always thought practice was about getting in physical shape and like learning the plays. It didn't hit me until it was way, way, way too late. Way, way, way too late. The practice is you're actually practice scenarios too. When you do the one-on-one -on -one drills, that's the actual game, in-game situation. How to get off a block, how to make this tackle, how to come around this corner, how to beat the man in front of you. I didn't get that. I didn't get that if I was to dominate in practice, how it would benefit me on the field. And also, how it would benefit me, you know, in the minds of the coaches and the team and other players. I just thought it was just basically, you know, run laps, get in shape, get ready for the game. I don't know, it was like a learning experience per scenario, like the drills. You know, you come around the corner with a guard in front of you, you know, with a, a running back, with offensive lineman, pulling out, blocking for him. You're put in a position to try to beat that, to learn how to beat that scenario. And it was it's practice. You're supposed to practice doing it. <laughs> I didn't get it. So I can completely understand where coming out of high school, you know, your mind isn't there. Well, I'm sure some kids is, are. So I'm sure some kids get it and probably kids today probably really get it more so than we did. But I, I wasn't there. I wasn't there realizing that school was teaching me everything I needed to know to take over the world. Didn't make the connection. And in ways, I did want to take over the world, <laughs> to put it crudely. You know, the, and the overall idea was for me to take over the world, whatever that means. Because more than likely, I'm too lazy and, and don't want the responsibility of taking over the world. I'll probably take it over, and let somebody else run it to hear you handle this. Because I, well, maybe not so much then, but now I'm just way too focused on what I want to do. What I want to do and what I want to think, what I want to say, what I want to be, where I want to go is such a high priority that it's probably very hard for me to compromise. Probably no probably about it. I even start off with a lot of times. Can you see me when I stretch my back? Stretch my back. Scratch my back. Scratch my back. I'm contented. Cause my tail and I'll be wagging. Fetch you the newspaper. Extend your hand and I will lick it. Toss the stick, I'll run and get it. Toss the bone, I'll be forever in your favor. Standing guard in the yard. Oh. Can you see when I twist my back? When I do that? Do my neck while I'm walking. Anyway, what was I saying? I forgot. But it's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Like I said, 217.0 this morning. I'm out here walking. I'm not sure how much I'll lose in the morning. I got on my sweating clothes, long sleeve shirt, long pants. It's not as hot because it's earlier in the day. Start off at 9 a.m. So it's still hot now. Don't think it ain't. Probably up definitely in the 70s. 
Well, there's the train, 10 on one. I'm early. Yesterday, the train went by at 10 on two. The other day, the ch train went by at 10 on two. It's 10 on one now. And I just heard it. But I'm way far away from it. Remember when I showed you the train tracks? Toss the bone, I'll be forever in your favor. We go Jeep Renegade. I love my vehicle. I love them, just looking at them. I just love the way they look. And when I got the, my car, my niece was disappointed. She thought it was gonna be like one of those, you know, Wranglers we take apart and big tires and, you know, all super masculine macho car. She was like, uh. Oh. She was like literally disappointed. She's like, uh. Oh. Tell me my car was cute. <laughs> and she just said, your car is adorable. I was like, it's not. <laughs> I'm like, your car is adorable. From the days of when I didn't have a car, when I didn't have a car, I was renting cars every weekend. And sometime during the week, I drove a lot of different cars. And when I drove that Jeep, I drove a Jeep Compass or one of the smaller Jeeps. And I was like, ooh, this is the one. Because I was sitting up, the way it was built, the way it looked, the squareness of it. The shape wasn't so contour, it was more, you know, had more closer to perpendicular lines. It was boxy to a degree. I was like, ooh, and the way it felt, the way it handled, didn't handle like a truck. I, I, I drove my sister's trailblazer one time. I almost flipped that damn thing over. These things, they handle like a truck. It seemed like they so top heavy or whatever. They'll flip over. I mean, what the hell? And it felt like a truck. This one didn't feel that way. It had good response, but it, the base felt like it was wider than it was tall. So it felt like it was on the ground. And it wouldn't get out of control. And I was like, oh, I want one of these. And I saw that. I drove a Renegade. And I was like, that's the one. And now... Just about everybody who drives it says they love it. My daughter drove it, my niece drove it. They like that car. I said, oh, you gonna give it to me when you're done? <laughs> and well, you gonna give it to me? And my, uh, my daughter, I was gonna say my daughter, I was gonna say her mother, which is my ex-wife. Who do I call that? How do I call that? Do I say her mother or do I say my ex-wife? Because she was my ex-wife. I, I can't say she was my ex-wife before she was her mother. That's not true. But I knew her before Kimberly, before my kids was born. So in ways, you know, the relationship between me and the relationship between me and Terry go back before the kids. Even though, you know, that relationship is the most important. You know, us, the kids make the whole thing. Even, you know, the kids make it not only just important, probably keep the whole thing if it wasn't for the kids probably wouldn't be a relationship at all <laughs> you know if it wasn't for the kids would probably ex-wife would just be you know nothing and then now the grandkids start the whole thing all over again older more experienced more settled more comfortable and who I am and what I am deeper understanding I'll say it again I'll say it before Said it before and I'll say it again. I've never seen a bad divorce. Or it may be bad, but over time or over years, they settle down and both parties 
are in a better place it seems and to the point that where they get along now and they do better. I mean, from what I look at it, from what I see, it seems to work that way. If I got to tell people, get married young, have kids young, get it over with. Get married, have kids, get divorced, get it over with. Settle that, let the dust settle on all that, and then live your life. <laughs> but that's not for everybody, of course. Some people get together, stay together 50 years, and I'm not putting that down, I'm not against it. Not at all. I just don't think it's the norm. And I don't think that's the, the norm, especially nowadays. But, you know, like I said, I'm not putting it down. I'm, you know, I'm for everything. I'm for, I'm, you know, maybe I could say that I'm not against anything. It's a good chance that I'm not against anything. The place I am now, where I'm at now, is a good chance I'm not against anything. I, I may have to explore that. I'm really, I can't think of nothing that I'm against. Or, I can't think of nothing that I really care about enough to be against. Or I don't think anything is significant or relevant enough to be against. There's a lot of things out there that I don't agree with. Now maybe lying. Lying, I'm against lying. At least for me. You know, at least for me. Other people can do it. I could probably liberally say, you know, I could probably make a case that where I can almost actually accept other people lying and that just being a part of who they are. But for me, I'm against that. Me, for me lying, I'm against it. I just, that's the one thing that I draw the line. Basically because my integrity is not worth, there's nothing on earth that I can think of that's worth me justifying my integrity. Now there may be a situation an uh, extraordinary situation to come up to where I may have to lie and save somebody's life in a, you know, like a criminal or a weird devious plot plan way or something. And we'll see what happens when that happens. You know, I mean, I definitely would. There's no doubt about it, I'm sure. I'm sure I pretty would, much would. You know, if, if something I could do to get out of. And then, whoever I lied to, that means I'd have to kill them. That means I'd have to eventually track them down and kill them. Because <laughs> they took my integrity to where they put me in a point to where I had to compromise something that I deeply believe. And I would have anger. And with that anger comes the Buddhist principles of suffering and pain. Hey! Stop! You got to make sure these people stop. They'll run your ass over. So I head on a swivel. Head on a swivel. So that's how that goes. Happy on a Monday. Feel good for a Monday. Starting the week off good. I feel, I feel good. I'm starting the week off good. I feel good. The energy is good. My energy is good. My energy is good. Now I need to transform this energy into productivity. I've been listening to some of the music that I've been that I made over the years. Some of it's so damn good. Slap myself. In fact, I posted something yesterday and I guess it was 
I don't want to say so good, but it was so in the pocket or hit the nerve. I got a phone call. They was like, man, <laughs> that's it. That's that, that. And they broke it down and said, you know, changes, intro, this, that, course. Blah, blah, blah. They said, that, you got something there. I was like, I know, man. I know. And we talked for about an hour. Christian buddy of mine, drummer. Probably my favorite drummer. I say probably just to, you know, be humble. More than likely my favorite drummer. We talked about LA Maggots and this and that. Talked for about an hour. Talked about music and the maggots. And, and I was like, all right, all right. What you think about Kamala? <laughs> you know, we went through that politics and religion. Cause he, I'm a devout atheist and he understands that. And he's a unapologetic Christian who has a broader understanding. I, I could actually probably say that a lot of Christians do, even though some of his ideals may be at the fundamentalist level, he's still open to, you know, the people's ideas and can at least talk. And one thing we did talk about though, is that a lot of times, and I kind of forgot about this. There are some instances where it's best if he kept his opinion to himself because he could lose jobs. He could lose jobs and money if he posted this or posted that on Facebook. You know, if he made his opinion known on certain things, that it, it could cost him jobs. And I was like, well, I forgot all about that. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I knew that was a real thing, like, like a long time ago, whatever long time ago means. But I was like, yeah, wow, that's right. You gotta be careful. Cause everything out here is so left and left wing. If he was a voice his, you know, opinion on some stuff, it definitely conflicts with the mainstream, the left wing mainstream narrative. And I could put him in a position to lose money. I was like, wow, yeah. I forgot, man. I forgot. Anyway, my name is Jeffrey. My name is Jeffrey Scott Mitchell. Swing it on y'all. Two times, for me, and for the funk, and for every elementary particle that has ever existed in any atom, in this or any universe that ever was, is, or will be. Totality of it all, theory of universe. Hypothesis of all as one. My name is Jeffrey.